The Amazing Mr. Malone. Operator. Operator. Get me the office of John J. Malone. The National Broadcasting Company presents The Amazing Mr. Malone. An exciting half hour of mystery starring George Petrie as the lawyer whose practice before every type of bar has become a legend. Our locale is the city of Chicago, the time, the present, and the hero of these weekly adventures, the amazing Mr. Malone. Malone's a name, John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. Tonight in our study of the cliche, let's examine the oldie, Never judge a book by its cover. As Exhibit A, I give you Richie Holland. Mr. Holland is the good-looking boy behind the desk in 427 of the Wentworth building. To watch him check his gun, you'd think he was auditioning for the part of a private detective in some movie thriller. He certainly looks the type, which is surprising. That's exactly what he is. Yeah. You Richie Holland? That's right. I got a friend who wants to see you, sweetheart. Well... Suppose you put away the pop gun first, huh? You think that'd scare him? Yeah, his mother was once frightened by a wedding. <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. I must remember that. I'll write it down so you won't forget to do that. All right, Fred. Everything okay, Sandy? Everything's okay. Holland, uh, this is Mr. Fontaine. Hello, Holland. Sit down. All right, Sandy. Wait outside. Hey, don't you think I'd I better said stick... wait outside. Anything you say, sweetheart. If you want me, just yell. I'll try to remember. Nice boy. Somebody ask you? No. I suppose you keep your mouth shut. I'll look for Maybe you'd better take a look first. What are your rates? I get $40 a day plus expenses. I'll pay you 100 with with 1000 in advance. You interested? No end. I'm looking for a girl named Connie Burton. Why? If I'm willing to shell out this kind of money, I must have a reason. Yeah, but you'd rather not tell it to me. Obviously. Mm -hmm. What did you say her name was again? Connie Burton. Connie Burton. Got a description? I can do better than that. Here's a picture. Well. This is business, Mr. Holland. Well, it could be pleasure, too. It's not going to be. With all my heart, Connie. So, you know, that's very pretty sentiment. You think you can find her for me? Sure she's here in Chicago? I'm positive. She came here from Boston a year ago. Oh, then I'll find her. Where can I reach you when I do? There's no telling. I like to be on the move, but don't worry, Holland. I'll keep in touch. That you can depend on. <laughs> Yeah, Jim. Do you realize what time it is? I've been waiting with dinner for three hours. Oh, it must be pretty cold by now. That's not funny. This is the fourth time this week. Where have you been? Working. So that's the new name for it. Look, June, I've had a tough day. Would you mind very much if we dispense with the arguments for one night? I bet she never argues with you. Who never argues with me? That girl. Look, June, there is no girl. I told you I'm working on a case. Then why didn't you phone me? Or were the wires down? Where's the paper? Richie, I'm talking to you. Well, fortunately, I can't hear you. You'll hear plenty before I'm through. Is this the girl? Where did you get that picture? I found it in one of your suits, and I love the inscription. With all my heart, Connie. It's not what you think. It never is. Well, you can tell her that the next time I see her, I'll make it... What do you mean the it... next time? I know where she lives. What? You thought you put one over on me, didn't you? What do you mean? You know where she lives. Let me go. Well? I saw her in Marshall Fields on Tuesday, and I followed her. Oh, you two are real clever. What are you babbling about? She must have thought that by bleaching her hair and going under the name of Lila Grayson, I wouldn't be suspicious. Well, you're crazy. I suppose she doesn't live at the Beverly. You saw this yes, girl? Yes, I did. And she's living at the Beverly? You're not fooling me with this act. Richie, where are you going? Richie! <laughs> Hello? Is that 
that you, Connie? What? What did you call me? Well, isn't this Connie Burton? No. No, you've got the wrong number. My name is Lila Grayson. Well, then I guess you wouldn't be interested in my message. I'm sorry if I... Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Who are you? Well, what difference does it make? Well, I, uh... I just thought that I recognized your voice. My name is Richie Holland. Oh, well, um... Assuming that I was Connie Burton, what's the message? A couple of your friends looking for you. Who? Fred Fontaine, boy named Sandy. Why are you telling me this? Well, darned if I know. But I once saw a picture of you, and it did something to me. Look, if this is a trap... Would I phone ahead and warn you? I'd like to be your friend. I could sure use one. Well, consider me a volunteer. Can I drop around? Um... Uh... How does 10 o'clock tonight suit you? It suits me fine. I'll be seeing you, girl. Take care of yourself till then. I hate to heckle, Mr. Holland, but that was a red light you just passed. Would you do me a favor? What? You call me Richie? All right. No, no. Go on. Say it. Richie. How's that? It sounded just the way I thought it would. I don't understand you. I don't understand myself. You mind if we park? Not if you want to. Well? No, I liked your hair better the other way. What? You know, the way it was in the picture before you bleached it. I hope you realize you're not making sense. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows that better than I do. Listen, Connie, I'm, I'm a private detective. I see. A week ago, two boys came into my office. Fontaine and Sandy. Yeah. They wanted me to locate you. And you did. No, that, that, that was a fluke. See, June saw your picture and remembered running into you at field. She, she followed you to the Beverly. Who's June? It's my wife. She must be a real help to you in your work. No, she was just jealous. And she had reason to be. What do you mean? Well, why do you think I called you without notifying Fontaine? Maybe you wanted to check first. No. Look, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I fell for you. You what? First time I saw your picture. <laughs> That's pretty ridiculous, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, things like that just don't happen in real life. As I said before, you're not making sense. I know that. I'm all mixed up. Well, what do you intend to do? Well, I... I want to go on seeing you. And what about Fontaine? That doesn't worry me. Well, it worries me. Oh, don't let it. Just don't let anything bother you. No, Richie, don't. Don't, please. Well? Funny you saying you're all mixed up. Why? Because I think I'm going to be in the same boat. Move over, darling, and make room. <laughs> sweetheart. Well, this is a surprise. We meant it to be. We? Mr. Fontaine is here, too. Oh. All right, Fred. Hello, Holland. How are you? Sandy and I were in the neighborhood, so we thought we'd drop by. It's very nice of you. Mind if we sit down? Yeah, help yourself. Well, what's the story? The story? On the assignment I gave you. Oh, well, I've been running into bad luck, Fontaine. I, I haven't been able to find the girl. It's been six weeks. Oh, time sure does fly. Don't it? Well, I'm uh, sorry to let you boys down. <laughs> I don't think you did, Richie. Tell me again. You remember our deal? Certainly. You were to get $100 a day plus expenses. So? So outside of that original 1000 I gave you, you haven't asked for any more. That's not in character. Why not? Well, I pride myself on being a good judge of human nature. And I'd say you had a large streak of larceny in your makeup. Really? Really. And I can't figure out any reason why you'd miss an opportunity to clip me. Unless. Unless what? You found Connie Burton. Well, then why wouldn't I tell you? Because you're real clever. Where is she, Holland? I have no idea. What do you think, Sandy? Well, if you want my humble opinion, I'd say he was lying. That's my opinion, too. You want me to try coaxing him? Please. Listen, you big lug, you put a finger on me. No, you don't. Oh. Sweetheart was reaching for his pop gun, huh? 
That's not nice. If you don't get out of here, no, I'll... Oh, what? Oh, you no good, dirty bum. Where is she, Richie? What do you think I tell you now? All right, Sandy. Carry on. Come on, sweetheart. Charge! I said charge! Well, what do you say? Drop dead. Okay, sweetheart. I'm glad you don't give in too easy. Because that's just how I get my kicks. And tonight I'm really gonna live. <laughs> Yes? Hello, Connie. Who are you? That's a very good question. But in the final analysis, who is anybody? Are you crazy? You're too literal-minded. Me? I'm a philosopher. Did you ever read Nietzsche or Schopenhauer? Listen, you. you... Should. <laughs> oh, isn't that silly? How are you going to find the time? What's the idea of the gun? I wish you wouldn't take this personally, Connie. Believe me, I, I got nothing against Who you. Who are you? Well, if you've got to call me something, try Harry. I don't know you. Does anybody know anybody else? It's hard enough to know yourself. As Spangler once wrote... Is it you up to this? Oh, now, you're not listening to me, Connie. You're, you're like all the... Who put rest... you up to this? See, see, you're obsessed with your own petty problems. But if you analyze any problem, the solution is, is perfectly simple. In your case, a mere tightening of the fingers. No! Oh. See how simple it was? Now you can sleep, Connie. Your problems are over. It was just one of those things, just one of those crazy things... One of those bells that now and then ring, just one of those things. It was just one of those not... That's funny. It was just one of those things, just one of those crazy things. I must be in the wrong office. Uh-huh. Hello? That you, Malone? Who's this, Lieutenant Brooks? Yeah. I'm glad you called, Lieutenant. The darndest things happened. Just a second ago, I walked into the office singing just one of those things. And there was no one there. Ain't it amazing? You were 15 minutes late, Counselor. What do you mean? Well, that's when we picked up a little lady who was waiting for you. Who? Her name is June Holland. June Holland? Yeah, yeah. We're inclined to think she's responsible for the murder of one Lila Grayson, alias Connie Burton. And this June Holland wants me to represent her? Yeah, so it figures she must be in it. Absolutely. Well, maybe this is our week to amaze you. Come on, Dom Malone. We're waiting. You are listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Here's a special program note on NBC's lineup of top adventure shows. This Sunday evening, four outstanding mystery features are yours over NBC. Starting with Tom Conway as the debonair gentleman adventurer, Simon Templer, alias The Saint. Then Lloyd Nolan, one of the nation's most popular screen actors, is featured as Martin Kane, Private Eye. Next, the second broadcast in a new series starring Carlton Young in the double role of Philip Galt and The Whisperer. Later in the evening, we travel to the Orient to join forces with Mr. Moto. Yes, for the best in Sunday evening listening pleasure... Tune to NBC for Tom Conway as The Saint, screen actor Lloyd Nolan featured as Martin Kane, Private Eye, Carlton Young as The Whisperer, and Adventures in the Troubled Lands of the Far East with Mr. Moto. And now back to the amazing Mr. Malone. That's where I got into the act. Two hours and 47 minutes after the murder of Connie Burton, I was down at headquarters. As I walked over from my office, I made an interesting discovery. The path from my door leading to the Homicide Bureau was an inch lower than the adjacent territory. 
I was in a rut. Well, as I live and breathe. That's what amazes me, Lieutenant. What? Why you live and breathe. Oh, that's a splendid one. Where's my client? Oh, would you care to pass a few pleasantries with me? Where's June Holland? Oh, I guess I don't have it for you anymore. Sussman! Did someone mention my name? Now, Mr. Malone would like to see his client. His slightest wish is my command. Have you boys ever considered radio as a career? Well, we're working on an act, but we're stuck for a name. Why'd you call it the Bob Hope Show? Oh, you heard that somewhere. And shut off that teletype. Well, as long as you ask so nicely. Where is he? Uh, right here, Mrs. Holland. Are you Malone? Uh, don't answer that, Counselor. It might tend to incriminate and degrade you. Don't mind him, Mrs. Holland. His mother was frightened by the happiness, boys. Sit down. Thank you. Now, what do you know about this Connie Burton? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I suppose you didn't know that your husband was running around with her. It's a lie. It was just business with Richie. He was hired to find her. What do you mean he was hired to find her? He's a private detective. Well, what do you got to say to that, Lieutenant? Oh, it was hardly business. You see, her husband was seeing this Connie for over a month. Right after they met, he made her move from the Beverly to the Marvin. That's not true. Then why were you around the Beverly checking on her? Because uh, I, I was... Just trying to help Richie. Despite the fact that he moved out on you four weeks ago? Well, I didn't kill her. I never handled a gun in my life. That's possible. Well, you mean she hired a torpedo for the job? Yeah. You got a line on him? Give us time. Meanwhile, you expect my client to sit here. If you have no objection. I've got a hundred, but I don't think they'll do me any good. Well, sit tight, Mrs. Holland. I'll get you dispossessed as soon as I can. <laughs> I'm looking for... Hey, what happened to you? I got to mind my own business. Oh. Maybe a moral on that for you. I can't see where. You Richie Holland? What if I am? I'm glad to know you. My name is John J. Malone. Well? I'm representing your wife. What for? Didn't you know the cops are holding her for murder? What are you mumbling about? A girl named Connie Burton was knocked off tonight. What did you say? Hey, easy, fella. You're ruining the drape. I asked you something, Malone. Obviously, the police haven't been here yet. What did you say about Connie? She was murdered. And I must have told him. You must have told who what? None of your business. Where is she? Your wife? No, Connie. Well, just where you might expect. I gotta see her. Now, wait a minute, Holland. Your wife is in a spot. The police think she was behind the kill. I'm crazy. I know who did it. Who? Never mind. I handle this my own way. They call your way murder. Is that what they call it? The last I heard. Well, you shouldn't complain. You may get another case out of this yet. See what you can do for us on a family rate. See tonight's paper, Fontaine? No, I haven't, Sandy. There's a wonderful story on the front page. <laughs> I mean wonderful. With the sword, it appeals to you. And it certainly <laughs> does to you. Yeah, you betcha. Seems a little girl named Connie Burton was shot and killed last night. Let's see that. Connie Burton. Haven't I heard that name before? I wouldn't know. I'm probably confusing it with two other girls. Anyway, they're holding the wife of a private dick named Richie Holland for the murder. This may come as a shock to you, Sandy, but I know how to read. Well, I didn't want you to strain yourself. Seems this June Holland was just... Who's that? Get behind the door. I got you. Just a moment. Hello, Fontaine. All I can say, Holland, is your recuperative powers must be tremendous. They are. Sandy will be awfully disappointed in himself. What can I do for you? I just wanted to check something. Did I tell you where to find Connie before I passed out? What do you think? I'm asking the questions now. Well, put away that gun, Richie. Might give people wrong ideas. Yeah, who, for example? For example, me. What? No, as you were, sweetheart. Just drop the cannon. Would you be uh, kind enough to dispose of that, Mr. Fontaine? Gladly. Hey, you made a field goal. Now, listen, you guys. Now, take it easy, sweetheart. We'll get back to you. What do you suggest for Well, you? he's pretty persistent. Let's dream up something very special for the boy. Something that will really discourage him. Hey, I got an idea. Well, suppose you illustrate on Mr. Holland. He's all yours, Sandy. Hello? You're mumbling, boy. Speak up. I, I want to talk to John J. Malone. Who 
is this? It's Richie Holland. You sound like you had another accident. Listen, Malone. I'll, I'll tell you who killed Connie. Who? A couple of boys named Fred Fontaine and Sandy Oppenheim. You must be mistaken. I tell you, they killed her. They hired me to find her. And when I wouldn't spill, they, they beat it out of me. What do they want with her? I don't know. She came here from Boston a year ago, and, and then... And then... Hello, Holland. Holland! Amazing. Simply amazing, the way that man recuperates. I must be losing my touch. I figured he'd be out for at least another couple of hours. Is it all right with you girls if I hang up now? Why, of course, Mr. Malone. You followed instructions beautifully. You thought you were responsible for Connie's murder. The man's obviously a psychopath. Now, look, Malone, I've got a proposition for you. Let's hear it. We'll cut you in for 10%. How much does that mean in dollars and cents? Don't you know Long Division? Never even heard of her. You know something, Fred? I think we're wasting our time. I don't think he knows anything about Connie. I'm inclined to agree with you, Sandy. I'm sorry if we inconvenienced you, Mr. Malone. Now, wait a minute, boys. You can't walk off like that. He's right, Fred. I forgot something. Oh. Thanks for reminding me, sweetheart. I'm much obliged. <laughs> You're listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. Independence Day last Wednesday was celebrated as a day of rededication to the principles upon which our country was founded. Each of us can play a part in this year of rededication to the principles of our founding fathers by taking several important steps. The success of the activity will depend on, first a more active participation by citizens in the affairs of the nation, state, and community. Second, an increased awareness of our individual rights and liberties. Third, an augmented pride in America's past and its accomplishments. And fourth, a wider recognition of the importance of making this country an example to the world of the strength and effectiveness of our own form of government. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. Well, that's what I get for using my head. It never fails. And after Sandy threw me that kiss, I took off for cloud 16. It's lovely up there this time of the year. There are 20 beautiful maidens for every man, and I'm the only man allowed. And then someone went and yanked my cloud from under me. All right, Malone. Time to wake up. Mm. Come on, come on. Uh -huh. Oh, I wish I had my camera here. I'd love to have a picture of this. Oh. What happened? Well, you tell me you were here. I'm not so sure. Oh, my head. Oh, it's real pretty. Who does your makeup? Shut up. No, I mean it. I mean it. That, that streak of red running through your hair gives you a certain, uh, je ne sais quoi. That's French, you know. Stop showing off your education. Uh, actually, I never got out of kindergarten. Well, I guess this ought to convince you. Convince me of what? That June Holland didn't kill Connie Burton. Now, what's one thing got to do with another? What do you think Fontaine and his boy went to work on me? Uh, which Fontaine is that, Fred? Yeah, you know him? Not as well as I'd like to. He's a Boston product. What do you know about a Sandy Oppenheim? Well, it's rumored that he's been associated with Fontaine in several banking ventures. Well, there was at least one other member in the firm. Who? Connie Burton. You're crazy. Listen, Lieutenant, they came to Chicago expressly to find her. And it's your contention they did? Definitely. Pick him up and pick up Richie Holland. Anything else you'd like? Well, while you're at it, you might as well pick me up, too. I'm not doing anybody any good on this floor. <laughs> Sweetheart. Me? Yeah. How long do you intend to keep us here? I really don't know. Now, look, sweetheart, That's we... enough, Sandy. You don't hear Mr. Holland complaining. I never do, Fontaine. That's what I admire about you. You always take your medicine like the little man you are. Listen, why don't All you... All right, hold it, Holland. That'll do. Open him up, Sussman. Hi, Hank. Hello, Counselor. Hey, what's the idea with the towel on your head? I'm doing a mind reading act at the Orpheum. Everybody here? Everybody but Mrs. Holland. Well, suppose you get it. Aye, aye, sir. I think you gentlemen all know Mr. Malone. Sure. Hello, boys. My, it's awfully quiet all of a sudden. What's the matter, Fontaine? Don't you remember me? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Sure you did. You and your friend were up to see me this afternoon. 
You remember that, Sandy? Hey, you can't prove it by me. Well, that's understandable. I've changed a little since then. Look, Lieutenant, I got a headache of my own. Do I have to sit through this? How about it, Counselor? All right, Holland. In deference to you, we'll make it short and sweet. You all know why we're here. I don't. Okay, Fontaine, we'll take it from the beginning. We're here to find out who is responsible for the murder of Connie Burton. According to the paper I read, it was a lady named June Holland. That was just enemy propaganda. Then suppose you tell us the truth, sweetheart. All right, Sandy. Connie Burton came to this town a year ago from Boston. That's the place that's noted for its beans, isn't it? It has a more recent claim to fame. About 14 months ago, seven men entered a bank messenger company there and waltzed off with a close to a million and a half in cash. Hey, remember that, Fred? Vaguely. Seems to me they never caught the culprits. You ought to know. Why? Because I got a hunch you were the brain behind that operation. Thanks for the compliment. Well, that's all you're going to get out of it. What do you mean? You had a girlfriend named Connie Burton. You slipped her the loot and she was supposed to meet you later so the mob could divvy up. Instead, she took off for Chicago. That's very interesting. It gets better as it goes along because that's where Richie comes in. What kind of a crack is that? They hired you to find Connie, didn't they? So? So you held out on him. Why? Well, not that it's any of your business, but I went for the girl. Tell me something, Holland. What did she have that got you? I mean, besides all the money. How's that? Well, the money is why you had her killed, wasn't it? Look, Malone, I don't like those kind of things. Neither do I, Richie. Somehow I can't see anything funny in murder, but then I've got no sense of humor. Okay, Lieutenant, he's all yours. Malone, you've played with that coffee long enough. Let's have it. You mean we have to go through this same routine again? Uh, why should this night be different from all other nights? Well, it's perfectly simple, Lieutenant. Richie Holland killed Connie. He was the one who hired that torpedo. Uh-huh. How do you know? He told you where to find the boy, didn't he? I, uh... Yeah, yeah. It was a guy named Harold Sherman, a philosopher type fella. Yeah, but tell me something, Malone. Why did Holland go back to look up Fontaine? Well, that was just an act. He thought that way he'd remove suspicion from himself, and he did. Uh, How's for a little proof? Well, who else knew where to find Connie? How about your client, Mrs. Holland? Nope. Remember, Richie moved Connie from the Beverly right after he met her. Well, what about Fontaine and Sandy? Holland never told them. He pretended to pass out. As soon as they left, he called his friend Harold and gave him his orders. Fontaine never would have killed her. Why not? You claim she double-crossed them with that loot. Sure. That's why they had to keep her alive if they wanted to recover it. Uh, what makes you think they didn't? Because they came to me later with an offer of a split. They thought you had all that dough? Uh-huh. But you're sure Holland got it. Well, doesn't he admit it now? No. You mean you haven't recovered that million and a half? And it looks like we never will. What's the matter with that, Holland? Doesn't he know you can't take it with you? You know, I told him that. You know what he said? What? If he can't take it with him, he ain't going. Let me talk to him, Lieutenant. Oh, no. Oh, no. Because you're just amazing enough to figure out how he could manage it. Good night, Malone. Ever hear the story of the Dixieland band? The boy on trumpet was especially good. He got hot at a party one night and blasted himself clear out of this world. Yeah, he was dynamite. I'll tell you all about him next week, so why not pick me up at my office at the same time? I'll be waiting for you. Good night. George Petrie was starred as John J. Malone with Larry Haynes as Lieutenant Brooks. Our program is written by Eugene Wang and directed by Richard Lewis. The Amazing Mr. Malone is based on a famous character created by Craig Rice and produced by Bernard L. Schubert. The events and characters in the story were entirely fictional and any resemblance to persons living or dead is entirely coincidental. Fred Collins speaking. The amazing Mr. Malone has come to you from New York. Stay tuned for The Man Called X over most NBC stations.